Welcome to Beyond Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Petrellis, and we are super excited for today's episode. There are a few fun things about it. Uh, first, we'll start off at the bottom of my screen, anyways, is our guy, John Sensabar. John is going to be joining the podcast. Um, maybe not every episode, or maybe every episode. We'll see how it goes and see what he wants to do. But, uh, you know, I think John brings an awesome perspective into what we do and what we cover. And uh, someone who listens to every podcast who really knows what we try to talk about. And, uh, you know, John's going to be our guy here uh, coming on some fun episodes where we think he can really entertain and be great. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to have him on board. We've been talking about this for a while. And now we get it to work. And, there's no better person to start off a type of episode like this for the first time than having on for the first time ever. And you see it, I'm wearing my Mustang football hat on here because I am all about the Mustang football team today. Uh, you see it on his sweatshirt to the right. Um, but our guy, Chris Murphy, a, a booster president for the Metro football team for as long as I've known him. Um, is dedicated to this program, is involved in more than and I've been around football for 15 years at the high school level. There is not a booster president who does more than this guy right here. Um, for his team, you know, week in and week out, home games, away games, team dinners, uh, practices. I mean, picking up t shirts, picking up equipment. He's a one man show, and we're super happy to have him on here today. So Jonathan Sensabar is joining us here uh, as, as, as another host. And without further ado, I said his name, but I'm going to introduce him again because he is a legend in Method. Ladies and gentlemen, our man, Chris Murphy. Hi, guys. Murph, welcome on. <laughs> and let, let me just start. It's about my, time. Yeah, let me start my hosting uh, gig here with, with, you know, I've known Chris Murphy since first grade. And I've known him. He's never changed. He's the most loyal kid you'll ever meet in your entire life. Granted, our first choice was to have the Malden booster president on, but he canceled. So we got Murph on. Uh, <laughs> you know, happens, which is fine. Um, but listen, I love Murph. I've loved Murph my, my whole life. He's a great kid. He's always there Aww. for you. What he does for this community is far beyond anything I've ever seen anywhere else in the entire state of Massachusetts. And I'm happy that my first episode being on here is to talk to my long best friend, Chris Murphy. Oh, I love you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've been friends with John for 30 years. I've been friends with Anthony for about, uh, about 11, 12 years. And yeah. I've been on the Method High Booster Club for 13 years. So yeah, you, you are right about as long as I've known you, Anthony. So uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, having me on. Let me be able to talk about what I do, and I'm sure what a lot of booster presidents across the the uh, state do. And um, let's uh, you know, let's have a really fun talk. I'm I'm, I'm glad to finally uh, finally be on beyond beyond podcast. So got them on. Let's have some fun. Yeah, man, we're excited to have you on, you know, and I meant what I said, you do a lot, you know, and, and on <laughs> social media, you know, you, you run like the, basically like the social media pages, you and the head coach, I think for the most part. So on top of it, yeah. I know how difficult <laughs> that is for this. So I know how difficult that is for you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, John does the Instagram. I do the Facebook and the website and uh, yeah, it's, 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 especially especially after the, you know we, we got really big with facebook this year um with this season so it, it, you know trying to keep it up to date and you know um it's it's you gotta you, plus we you know because we like to also like especially with like the social media aspect like i don't want to only be up to date with like what the kids are doing now but we also like to be up to date with what our alumni are doing because like if our alumni are doing something really cool um we like to you know recognize them and uh and, and especially like you know being a program that's uh 135 years old you got a lot of history you know we're also you know it's the biggest program at the school you know your varsity level you know this you know numbers like like every high school team except for it seems across you know our numbers aren't what they were you know five ten years ago but we're still you know uh right around that 50 kid mark so Murph let me ask you over over the decade that you've been doing this yep I would say you've been at the helm during probably 
the biggest changes in the history of of the club and, and of the team and mm-hmm. the, the uh, I would say high school football in general. Tell me about some of the things that you've seen, like from the very first year you were the booster president to now. How are you evolving? Like, do you just are you looking out there? Or are you using the kids to help you kind of get up with with times with the social media and what everyone's <laughs> yeah. doing? What do you do? What do you use? Who do you go to? Well, I mean, when when I so I, I joined the board in 2011. I became the secretary in 2014. And then in 2015, so when I started the Booster Club and the Booster Club, I was invited on by uh, Ed and Sandra Finn, who are, they were like the gold standard of how you, you know, run a Booster Club. They, they when I came in, we had, you know, probably like 14 or 15 people, like sets of parents. Um, we're just doing huge things with a lot of family, you know, a lot of involvement. Um, and then in 2015, I took over. Uh, we had a mat, you know, they had most of the people we had helping out, their kids had already graduated, like three, they were doing this, a lot of this as like a social aspect that, you know, you got, you got to get out. You were at the games with people you liked. Um, yeah, and once you, you get know, removed from it after a while. And then yeah. I, I took over. I mean, I had some, you know, when I was the first year as president, good vice president, uh, Bo Lynch, um, Erica Marsh, uh, John Costello, who was the uh, past president. Yeah, you know, I did have some good help, but, you know, we did have a, a, a lot of people leave, uh, like the Horahans, the Costellos, the Petrellos, the Liberties. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of a lot of great people who, and then, well, so when I started, we had a freshman program, a JV program, a varsity program. And then, and I think what you've seen like with a lot of, a lot of the the program school, I don't know if any of the programs still have a freshman program. You know, we lost the freshman program due to dwindling numbers. And then, so now we just, you know, we probably went from a team of like 75, to a team of like 50, 45, 50. So that was a big difference. And well, that's, like for, that's like, also because of let's, I mean, because football also over the last five years has become such a, with CTE and studies yeah. and things like that. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think definitely a lot of people with like what they've seen going on, um, you know, have kind of like, you know, push back on having their, and, and you can see it at the youth level everywhere almost, right. you know, kids aren't playing football the way they used to. But I, I think also, and I, and, and I do tell like, cause people, a lot of people will tell me, you know, especially now that I have school age kids, you know, I'm, I'm really worried about football, you know, but we like, I, I actually saw an article that came out this year about a team that started using guardians. And people don't know what Guardians is. They're basically a pad that goes over your helmet. Yeah. Well, I'm like, this is weird that they're doing this because we've been doing this since when John Curley got hired five years ago. One of the first things he did was he started putting Guardians. I was say, you guys, yeah, you guys have been doing it for a while. Um, so I'm like, wow, it. it's like, this isn't new. Yeah. So, like, we, we were one of the first teams around, I think, to, to look at that and put the guardians on, you know, they don't do, you know, like 21 years ago when I, my senior football, we were practicing four, you know, we did four days for a week. Then we went to two days and we went, yeah, there was just no thought. You don't see that anymore. And, and you don't see the, the, you know, coaches have realized you don't need to do, you know, four days of contact anymore. You don't need to like, I don't want to say kill each other, but literally like, well, you know, just that you, constant... you don't realize, I mean, the studies that come out now, obviously, with just the physical contact where you yeah. can realize that, yeah, you, you, you don't so, know as much of it as you have. I, I give our coach a lot of credit for modernizing with the times and, and you know, doing things. To, and we have a great, great athletic trainer, Jackie Holmes, who does a great job at, you know, keep an eye on these kids and making sure they get the treatment they need. If they have to go on the protocol, they go on the but, protocol. But here's what we're saying too. And I think like John kind of alluded to this as well, but like, I don't know booster presidents that like 
know the trainers and know what they do and the coaches and the different things that they're like, like, and I mean that, and I say that, and that's kind yeah. of like the part of the dedication is job. Like you're saying there's a decline in family involvement. There's a decline in maybe people on the board, like mm-hmm. that's beginning to go down. And I saw it on Thanksgiving, dude, your, your concession stand for a method Malden rivalry on Thanksgiving was ran by your family strong yeah. for three and a half quarters. Three and a half yeah. quarters. So that's not, that's not easy. So over the last couple of years, maybe we can just say post COVID because this is probably where you've seen the dip the uh, most. How I think po- definitely post COVID. Um, so when I started, we had, you know, we had, we had, like I said, I'll start from when, like when I was president, we did have a, you know, a decent group of help at the concession stands, but we also would get a lot of kids from the high school, you know, I would email the guidance counselors at the beginning of the year. They would put a thing out, hey, you know, and we'd give them a t-shirt, we'd give them a hot dog or a pizza and a soda. And, you right. know, we'd get three or four, you know, when I started, we didn't even have as many as like probably like 10 high school kids, you know, you know, the, the parents would cook the food, get everything ready. And then they would just, and then we'd handle the money and they would just get everything out. And I have definitely seen since COVID that decline in, you know, kids want to get involved. I will say one one crazy thing um, that surprisingly since COVID that has gone up is our attendance has gone, I feel like has gone up. I think like pre-COVID we were having and this is like, I think you guys had started right right at post-COVID. And this is when you kind of broke my chops about the pizza. I mean, I wasn't going to go there. We're going to go there right now. We will. So so we'll, I'll, I'll get this out of the way. So I used, you know, we. So are you, are you blaming? Saying, what are you? Uh, go ahead. I want to see. Well, let me, let, me explain, let, me ex- let me explain how it goes. Let me explain <laughs> how it goes. I think we're getting the COVID-19. Yeah, I mean, so, now we're getting it. Now we're going to find out. So like that 20, later. like, so like the, I would say like 2018, 2019 season, the two seasons for COVID. If I bought 15 pizzas, I was bringing two or three to the, to the fire station or the police station afterwards. Like we, we weren't getting great crowds we weren't having you know you know first game of the year we'd have a decent crowd on thanksgiving we'd of course thanksgiving we'd always have a decent crowd but we never had to buy pizza for thanksgiving or like a home until this year year game right like yeah i mean still like and then so i got to the habit of just buying 10 pizzas because this is what so and then like the the home open i'd buy 12 and and i'd probably be stuck with like a half a pizza so that first home, you know, home game, I bought 12 pizzas. I sold them all after the first quarter. I mean, why? Because I'm like, where are all these? The season you from? bought 12 pizzas. 12. Well, it's, Christopher, it, it, well, Christopher, it, Christopher, Christopher, you've been booster president for how long? How many opening games have you and, done? And, you thought and, 12 and like, pizzas was enough? And I, if you just listen, I just said <laughs> home openers. I, I was I was lucky to set, sell 10. No way. Come on, I, bro. Right hand. <laughs> Scout's on him. Scout's on him. Listen, listen. I, I, will, I will say Scout's this. Scout's on him. Listen, I, I will say this. And and I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I'm noticing. Medford High has been, and it's to no one's fault, they've been subpar for quite a long time. Okay? Um. And listen, no, no, hold on. record hasn't been where we want it to be. Right. For a while. Well, that's what I mean, and and it's been historically pretty rotten but, for the past. But but what I'm saying is, we've covered so many high school teams, and I've said it to Anthony. For quick example, we've gone to Wilmington on a Friday night. That yeah. is the place to be for people who have family there, who don't have mm-hmm. family there, for the locals, for the firefighters, for the policemen. They, they're all there watching the game. I couldn't even find a parking spot. I think I was late this first game this year. For like by 15 minutes, couldn't find <laughs> yeah. a spot. Now yeah. I think the difference is that the I think Medford is turning it around. You guys had a great year. You just finished yep. off really strong. I got a kid who's at Medford High. When I was at Medford High, you remember your senior year, you guys weren't that great, but people I, I it was think, still I, the thing to do Friday night. I What's think the top there? thing 
I think the tough thing is the Thursday nights. Yeah. And I and I get it. I do get it. Like there is a there's a shortage of referees in the in the state. It's tough to get it. I know from an administrative standpoint in the school, it's good because if something happens at the game, it doesn't go into the weekend. They come back to school the next day. They're able to handle, you know, anything that happens. But I will say, you know, you're also kind of competing against other events now. Thursday night seems to be a big night for school plays and and other things that good you point. know good point. the school district has so you're competing against those things now and um it has been tough for like you know we don't see as many teachers at the games anymore as we used to because you know you being a teacher you know you're getting ready for, 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 for the next morning yeah so you know when you would have probably gone to the game because you know it's the next you know it's saturday the next day now you could you're like, all right, it's Thursday night. I got work tomorrow. I got to be there. So that's one thing I think we're competing against. But I, I will say, like, we have gotten those post-COVID crowds. And maybe it was just kids, you know, sick of being inside. And, like, now it's time to get out. But, like, I remember buying that first game, 15 pizzas. Then the second, I'm like, all right, well, now that was just, just a home opener. The second game, I bought 15 pizzas. I had to go to Wegmans across the street, like with a couple minutes left in the before the half, and buy 10 more. Listen, common trends. A common trend. Listen, let's just honestly let's put this whole thing to bed. Um, and just no, admit, no. admit you you can't gauge for, for your life. You, you're not very good at gauging pizza. Well, that you first year was that, that first year was tough, but now you know I've gotten to have it. We buy. Home opener will buy in 25. Is it regular Every eight, other week slice, we'll is it eight slices? Eight slices? Eight you slices. Okay, so you do eight. We do eight. So think about it. You do. You would do in 10 boxes. So 80. you were saying that 80 slices of pizza in a home opener was enough before. Before COVID, yeah. That's and I mean, and there, there, was a, there, there was a time where we would do also, I mean, I'll tell you what, we, when I started, it was 20 pizzas. Plus, we were doing hamburgers and hot dogs. We were doing uh, every soda known to man. We, you know, hot chocolate, coffee. Like, we had. We had how do you guys not room. have that kitchen? Like, how do you not have that area where all that stuff is? So, uh, part of it has to do with the uh, facilities down there. Um, you know, the, the, you know, we do need new facilities. You know, I am on the Hormel Commission every year about that. But another part of it is also like people. Like you don't, you know, you got to have one guy running a grill. You, you need the, have, you need the manpower. You have, yeah. you have, you got to have one person, you know, wrapping hot dogs and wrapping burgers. What, you what about one person in charge of care? Why don't you look into uh, possible? Why don't you get like a, a local food truck down there Friday night? You got to pay them. <laughs> That's yeah, absolutely. But it gets, <laughs> Dude, it, it gets mean... the name out there. But you know, it gets their name out there, and you know what? You you yeah, advertise but... it for a week or so, and say, "Listen, like, I, you know, I'm I'm not gonna, I don't want to give anyone uh, plug anyone because you know, it, it, Joe's truck's gonna be down here for, or even release the schedule and say Joe's truck's gonna be here October fifth. Let's make sure this is a night that everyone comes out and at least partakes in. Yeah, it, you know, I mean, but Chini balls down there. Let's get some Chini. <laughs> I mean, we, 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 I, I've gotten it to be. What's going you know, on over there? What's going on over there, Marv? Uh, kids are a little excited. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I think for, for regular season games, you know, my, my nephew's been awesome. You know, it's a, it comes a night out to him. And one then, the you know, best, on the way, the on the way home, yeah. I, I buy him Taco Bell and he's pretty excited. He's on the so he's Beer done a pretty. So we we've done a pretty good job with home. You know, I did have um, you know, during halftime this year, uh, Sherry Rossetti would definitely come. You know, a tough thing though, you know, people want to watch their kids play. Um, I'm not gonna say I don't have any help because I I I've had four mothers this year that that cook for these kids every week, who make pregame. You know, make sure that they have sandwiches before the game and drinks before the game. So. You know, I don't want people to think I don't have any help because they they that have, they've actually taken a huge weight off my shoulders as far as I can on the feeding of these kids. And to be honest with you, I would rather run around like a crazy person at the concession stand every Thursday night than have to feed these these 
these kids because they can eat. Those yep. wolves can eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about, so, so let me ask you something. So, what um, what are the things that you would that you would see that would like improve overall? Just you know, att- att- attendance at the games. Like, what do you, what do you think would do it for you? I know. But skip the Thursday and Friday night. What do you see that's really taking a toll on the crowd? I, I, I think it's you know you're seeing you're seeing um the class sizes at the school go down. I mean, I think you I think the amount of kids that are graduate you know it actually at the school now you see less kids. Um, I think kids are doing more. I think you know we have some home situations where. You know, kids, kids' parents got to, you know, another thing, you know, I hate to go back to Thursday, but, you know, some kids' parents, they work Thursday nights. They, they can't get to the games. And they have, um, you know, brothers and sisters who they have, their parents have to be home on Thursday night to take care of them and get them ready to school the next day. So, I mean, yeah. I, think, I think that stuff um, really ties into it. Um, we've done some things this year, I think, that, you know, John got into doing, like, theme games. So, like, we've done, like, Teacher Appreciation Night. We've done Method Pop Warner Night. We've done First Responders Night. We've done Alumni Night. Um, that's kind of helped, but I, I think, you know, I'm hoping the fact that we had probably the best year we've had in 30 years this year is going to get, you know, it's definitely gotten people talking. Sure. Um, winning, we winning had, pro- we had probably the we had probably the best Thanksgiving crowd we've had in a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, Medford there, or Malden. There was something about covering your guys' game at Fenway two years ago that was great, mm-hmm. but there's something different about being in Hormel at a packed house and just like the atmosphere there, like Fenway is cool. It's memorable. It's awesome. And I'm not downplaying it. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you guys something that I haven't told anybody except for John Crow. Um, did I think the Fenway game was cool? Yes. Was it a once in a lifetime thing? Yes. Was it awesome? The kids love it. Yes. A part of me, I said, cause, cause you know what? It's like, that was supposed to be our, the game is supposed to be at home now. I go, if I were a senior, I would have rather been home. I'd have rather been home now. Yeah. And again, like a, a lot went into that to getting that done. And I'm not, you know, like I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I, I know that, you know, because at the end of the day, it's what the kids loved it. It was, a, you know, you got, they got to, not <laughs> how many people get to say they played football at, at Fenway Park. A lot less people have played football in Fenway Park than played baseball in Fenway Park. So, yep. um, but you know, part of, you know, part of me was like, it's, it's not the same. It's not Thanksgiving morning. It's, you know, we played on a Tuesday. You know, there's something about, and there's something. Maybe and you know save it, the it, Super Bowls for that. You know. Yeah, I mean, the Super Bowls probably be really cool there, like because. Yeah. Um, Better than driving out to Foxborough, Jim. <laughs> but th- there's something about Thanksgiving morning at home, even going to Malden, and because yep. you, you, you know you, you hope to you hope to get a win at Malden. That's just you that's can't probably describe your, it. That's probably your first Thanksgiving that you had nowhere to go Thursday morning. I woke up Thursday morning at, at, at you know, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what am yeah. I supposed to do? It Let is. Ask, I, like, I get Anthony, that feeling, man. Anthony, does uh does AC get um Hormel Friday nights? So they get it Friday nights when Medford's away. So mm-hmm. why does why does AC get Friday nights when Medford's away? Why, why doesn't Medford just get Friday nights and AC get thirty Thursday nights? I'm not sure. It, it might have something to do. With refing in certain areas like the CCL, I feel like when I coached in it for the most part, we pretty much had the same refs. Like, yeah. no matter we, we do, have the, we do, we do get the same crew. Um, and and we're basically guaranteed them Thursday nights. So I think that you know to have that consistency of the same same guys there who you're 
you know, you're well, familiar with the same but Thursday's yeah. more Thursday's more the school decision, right? Would you say, Murph? I mean, you kind of said that school, yeah, kind of backs that a little bit more. Yeah, the school, the you know, it's it's worked out well for it's work, you know, it's worked out well. Um, again, that's that's above my pay grade. I know, so, but I'm telling you, it, it, just like <laughs> you were talking about having that home field feeling on a Thanksgiving. I will say if something about a Friday tomorrow, night, man. Oh, I, if, I used to love Friday night. If they, if they, if they I, said to I, me, to, if they said to me tomorrow, do you want to go back to Friday night games? We'll let you call it. I'm like, see you on Friday. You know, hey, <laughs> and, and I think a Thursday <laughs> night game is cool. I think a Thursday night game is really cool. Once in a while. If you had like two of them on your schedule. And they were maybe separated by like a month. And that's yeah. something you could hype up knowing that you had two short weeks. That's when the school can have a theme week or have something that draws the kids to come in that Thursday, right. no matter what the record is. Obviously, the better the record, the better the draw, right? But if not, you got to have a backup plan for it. But Listen, like, like, And you both experienced it. I experienced it with Murph. But there was nothing better than after Friday, the game's over. <laughs> And you're going out with your friends. Agreed. Like, that was the best. Oh, it didn't matter if you want to lose. Like, you know, it was just like that yeah. whole feeling. Like, I just I just worked my butt off, and now I'm going to hang out and just and, and oh. chill with the friends. Like, I'm, I, I remembered it feeling awesome for them with my buddies, you know? And I will yeah, say, I mean, as a coach, and I'm sure John would agree with this, like John Curley, it is nice, though, to have a Friday to actually go live scout somebody and go see a team that you potentially yeah. see in the next week or two weeks. Like, getting film's great, but a live scout, and Curly will agree with yeah. you. There is, there is, when you see something on film and then you see that kid in person, like, whoa, that kid's way bigger than I thought. Because I know that, like, you know, when we fight Cambridge at home, I mean, there are a lot of teams in our league that have switched their Friday night games. Yeah. But I know that, like, Everett will still play Friday night games. Yeah. Um, Cambridge still plays Friday night games. When we play Lynn English, I think we play them on a Friday night at there. But I know, like, we've played Revere at, at Revere on Friday nights. We've played, I mean, Thursday nights. Chelsea, I think we've played Friday nights at home. Um. So Malden, I think, does, it, Malden, yeah, Malden does I mean, play Thursday nights, but I think they have played I, Friday yeah, nights. Friday nights is, yeah, yeah. Friday night home game. Is Something Friday about night it. Lights. I mean, it's Friday just like, yeah. That's what yeah. they say. It, it, the, two, two, the two things I always say, it, it, it's called, you know, Friday night lights and Thanksgiving football. Thanksgiving football is meant to be played on Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, football is meant to be played Friday nights, but, you know, like you said, sometimes, you know, sometimes things change and you got to adapt. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'd say I would tell you, you know, over over the last eleven years, you've seen you know, I have seen a lot of change, and um, I I think I I was doing the math before we got on the podcast. So in my time as president, I've had thirty seven captains. Ooh. I've had I've been through three head coaches, and I think something like a hundred and. 90 seniors or something like that because we that's the other thing that's changed so when i was originally booster club president we would have like 22 24 seniors a year so like you're raising money to try to buy gifts for 24 guys now i'm you know i'm having 12 10 8 you know four we had a we had 15 a couple of years ago that was like the biggest class we had had in a while but like right now we're kind of averaging in like that dozen range for seniors. I think this year we have nine juniors that are coming back. And we'll you know, we'll probably pick up one or two seniors coming up. But um yeah, classes of I mean the team size. So let me think, ask you, you this. Obviously, like senior classes fluctuate and obviously yep. year in a year out, depending on the class that's exiting versus the class that's coming in from seniors to the incoming freshmen, your numbers can rise and dip and new kids that maybe jump on board or leave, right? Whatever. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the number? And I maybe you can't give me a totally accurate number, but give me a ballpark. What? As booster president, what are you looking at every year as far as like what you need to raise 
to kind of stay above water, to get these kids, provide kids. Because some of these meals, and I mean this is no joke, I teach in Mefford as well, and I know these mm-hmm. kids on these football team. And I also understand that there are a lot of kids that I've taught my class, and I know a lot of kids that play other sports, that the meals that they get in school or provided from school are sometimes the only meals that some of them maybe get or mm-hmm. um, one of two meals that they get in a day, right? So – you provide Today, yep. a lot for these kids and you do a lot and maybe go we, on with a lot of programs too, but what's that number? We got lucky this year. Um, this number was, this. it was definitely different in years past. In years past, I'd say probably that seven to eight thousand, you know, eight, nine thousand mark. This year I got lucky because like I said, we do have a lot of kids that do have some, some food issues. Um, so we, I got, uh, one of our seniors this year, Jack Lombardo's uncle manages stop and shop in Medford and emailed me at the beginning of the year and said, Hey, anything I can do to help, you know, so every week he, they would donate, uh, you know, bread for toast, jelly, p- bananas or apples, cases of water, uh, Nutri-Grain bars. It's not like when the, the cause, cause you know, being you're there, you're at school at 7.30 in the morning, and with football, you're not out till like 6 o'clock at night. Plus, we do a study hall. So, they're, they're, so they're, 12 they're hours a day. Out. Yeah, you're there basically 12. So, that, that they helped us huge this year because the kids can come in um, after study hall before they get in the field and grab a snack, grab a bottle of water. Um so that was a huge, and that, that like I said, they, they were able to donate that to us this year at no cost, and it was a huge financial burden because, you know, it was costing us about 100 bucks a week to go out and get, you know, fruit, and water, and stuff like that. Uh, before I had the mothers this year, it was costing us about 150 to 200 bucks a week for meals. You know, now they switch off as we're doing uh, every other week. I'll go to a place like Dom's and get like, you know, some sort of like big ziti or chicken broccoli ziti. And then every other week, our mothers are making some like, you know, chicken and rice, beef and rice, so uh, you're empanadas. Like two grand on food alone. Yeah. That I mean, a little be- less now because, like I said, like our mothers have helped out a lot. Yeah. But then, like, um, you know, Camp camp gear is something you know. You come in, you you know, shorts and a t shirt for camp. That's twelve hundred bucks. And that's yeah, it's not getting cheap. And then every time we get t shirts for the kids, that's that's five hundred bucks. Right. And then this year, like this this year, like so, if we were averaging about for our senior gifts, it was about a hundred bucks. We'd buy them like a, a running jacket. We'd get them. A banner for the, the, the Thanksgiving game or the whatever the last home game would be. We'd get another couple other like gifts. This year, John said, "Well, why don't we? Because we do a raffle, we do banners, we do, you know." So in the, in the summer, I send out things to businesses and alumni to sponsor banners at the game. And you, and you guys are seeing like when you go in, we have the banners up uh, with all the sponsors. We have a program book that people sponsor in. Um, we throw stuff on our website. We sell we sell T-shirts. We sell we sell the concession stand. That all brings in money that helps. But you know, John said, why don't we trust he, We try this uh, sponsor to see you this year. Um, so we put a thing out. We put a you know our coach off it, who's our assistant coach, but is also probably like the probably one of the most organized guys we have. He was really great with keeping stats. and keep, it, He wrote me up a little paragraph about his senior, and he put this thing out there. And I thought, you know, we'd get a sponsor for each kid, and, you know, it might take us up until the end of the se- season. I put it up on Facebook, and I think I went to go do something with Andrew, and, like, an hour later, I come back to my phone, and it's like, bing, 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 bing. And the, the outpouring of support for this city was so overwhelming. You guys actually uh, were one of our sponsors for our senior. Um, we had an alumni that you know sponsored 10 season our RK Home Builders. Um, we had community members, alumni, 
you know, people that have known these kids since uh, like their uh, Pup Warner, Junior Mustangs days, it was just, uh, and we were able to, you know, we looked at what we raised and we're like, we like tripled what we thought we were going to raise. So we ended up buying them Letterman jackets this year for the first time in a while because like, wow. Well, it's this, nice you know, this, to be there's creative. There's such an overwhelming like, support. Yeah. You guys, cause and, you guys and, do squares too. Like We've done squares. We've creative. done, um, we do the raffles every year, uh, like the, uh, the cash raffles. Um, squares are weird because squares are like every, every like, uh, like it's like the biggest fundraiser I feel for like a lot of places now is squares. Like, yeah, yeah, I know like you guys at the McGlynn school that we did, we did do Super Bowl squares and uh, the hockey team mm. does them. And it's like, this has become like such a, and, and it's a fun little uh, raffle too to do. And, you know, we do the cash raffle every year that, that generates a lot of money. The, and then, you know, we have a lot of businesses that help us out. Like Ronnie's place does all our pizza. Um, Antonio's has done, um, not Antonio's. Uh, Michi's has done some stuff for, for us as far as meals. You know, people, are, people have been so generous. And hey, that's listen, another thing, like. That's the thing with Medford. I, I, I will say this yeah. is, I think once you, you send out that, that call for help, people come out of nowhere to help. And I think that everyone can take a page out of your book because there are so many different places in Medford, whether they're businesses or teams or clubs yeah. or whatever that they don't utilize the community and they sit there and it's just like, Hey, you know, they're very quiet about the help that they need. Sometimes they just fold and they quit and they give up and things close down. Yeah. They don't have the budget for things, but I've seen so many things in, in the old days of Medford go, go, go away because they didn't cry for help. They didn't call out. They didn't ask the yeah. community for, for, for any help back, but you definitely you've started that. The question I'd have for you is what are the things that, You'd like to see implemented some new ideas, some new things for next season. Like, because right now we're, we're in March, okay? And mm. you really start going, like, in spring. Like, spring is when you're starting to think about the summer workout and stuff. Like, I, I, I like, I like to say I, I stop. Yeah, you're, yeah, I know. I, I'm a full year. You know. I'm, I, so, so I'll, I will say this. is like, I, and I, 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 and I've never, I've always had a great relationship with the coaches we've had. Jay Nascimento was before John. He's a great guy. We had a great relationship. But like when I when when John got hired, and I, I I tell I say to this day to people around the city, and I'm gonna say this publicly. And I told him I was doing this thing, and he said, "Don't don't please don't bring me up because that's the kind of he doesn't like he doesn't like the uh, the credit that he deserves. He me he is." I, at first, I always thought the job should have gone to a Medford guy. Boy, was I wrong. I will say, you know, he, um, I was like one of the first people he reached out to when he got the job. We sat down. He got hired, I think, on a Monday. We sat down on a Saturday uh, for, we we had lunch at John Brewer's. He said, I want to do it in a, the in, in the tavern. That way, when people come in, they see you and I talking and people know that, you know, Mustang football is is here to stay, and I left that meeting and I was like, "Wow, was I, you know, wow, was I wrong for ever quite them, you know, giving them a thought to not hire this guy." Yeah, you've said that he, he, what he has done for this program over the last five years has been amazing. Um, yeah. And he's kind of like said to me, "He goes, I'm not, you know, you're a part of this program. You're 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 a partner to us. You're I want you, you know, I want." I want the kids to know you. I want. I want. I want you there. And I. And it's been. I'm. Pro, I am. Pro, I mean. I'm probably in season at the high school two, three times a week. Um. I'm talking to him on the off season every. And because another thing, like he's been big about, has been like the community aspect of making the. You know, your goal is from the be good football players, but your first goal is from the be is good students. The second goal is for them to be good citizens. The third goal is for them is to be good football players. And so we've done, on the off season, we've done flags at Oak Grove Cemetery for the for Memorial Day. We've done the citywide cleanup, uh, cleanup every year at Hormel Stadium. We have the kids down there, you know, 
I said that we, as we said to them, though, this is your this is your backyard. You want your back your your back and front yard to look beautiful. And you so have every, tables every, city, like every city event there is. Yeah, we. I mean, we're at we're at everything. We're at Clipper Shit Day. We're at Community Day. We're you know raking leaves for uh, for disabled people. Um, I know there are years we've done snow shoveling. I mean, there's no days off. <laughs> Um, this week, you know, the, at the Guns and Hoses game for the police department, we ran the concession stand there. You know, we we want them out in the community. We want people to see these kids. We want people to understand how great, great of kids they are, uh, men and women. Like we we are we are w- probably one of the few teams in the state that we have a female player, and she scored a she, touchdown last year, right? Scored a touchdown. Scored a last touchdown year. last year in JV uh, in. She is believed the she's the second female varsity football player in the program's history. Um, the first one was Tess Morrow, who I had the pleasure of having as a a player. Uh, she graduated in 2018, I think it was. Oh, so wow. I've been lucky to have both of them uh, in my tenure as president. They're both wonderful young women, um, and they're Mustangs. That that's what they'll tell you. They'll they'll tell you I'm I'm a Mustang. Uh, and it, it's awesome. And so talk about that. I'm going to stop you there for one second. You just said it. And this is the perfect way to segue into it. Being a Mustang. There is nobody in the city of Medford who loves being a Mustang more than Christopher Murphy. Period. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Who knows the history of the city? Who knows everything about the city? There might be people. Yep. There might be other people that might argue with me and being like, shut up. You know, blah, blah, blah. but I am telling you, you are up there. You are up there with the best of them. What I want to ask you this in two parts, dude. One, something that means a lot to me that I see you post every year that is extremely sentimental is you have a picture with your daughter every single <laughs> year at the home opener of the Mefford High football games. And yeah. to see that grow and, you know, seeing her now, um, you know, and I, I see her in school. So to see that and see that growth, I think that's really cool and shows how much you love Mefford. So one, talk about that, but then obviously just your love for the Mustangs in general, dude. I mean, there is... I've never seen anything like it. I really, and I mean that complimentary and with no insult there. Like, yep. I, I mean that. Well, every year my wife says to me is, that you, you keep saying, uh, you told me five years ago that this was a year. I actually think I announced that one banquet that like, I was going to be stepping aside. And like I said, who wants to do it? And there was basically was saying it to almost an empty room. <laughs> um, yeah. But when we had our daughter, um, back in 2017. So she was born in July. So she was six weeks old for the first game. And my wife, I was down there, I was doing the concession stand. My wife brought Sadie and we won. Uh, it was actually, I think that year we, it was like our first home open win in a couple years. And, um, Caitlin's like, I got to bring Sadie to the games now. I got to say, he's like, so I took a picture with her in the corner of the end zone, holding her up. And I said to, and Caitlin looked at me and goes, this is going to have to be a tradition, isn't it? And I go, so every year, and, and, and I hope to do this for, till, you know, she, she decides we, and we take a picture in that corner end zone at the entrance of the stadium right by the gate, and yeah. right by the gate and we take it in the end zone and it's it's and now i have a brother who you know we don't do a group photo but like that 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 picture with me and her is like that's like something special every year that 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 we do and then she's all and like this year like i kneeled and she's like but you have to pick me up because we always you always pick me up and i'm like you know you're right and you know, so I have, uh, that's like my, the highlight of my my existence now is to be able to share that because, you know, most people like they want to share with their, they sh- want to share that with their son. Like, you know, we have a, we've had a lot of, we have, you know, Justin Marino now, who's a third generation Mustang captain. So he's something he's, you know, his dad shared with his dad. Now he shares with his dad and his grandfather and, I share with my daughter and um, maybe one day, you know, we, like I said, we've had, we've had some women on the team and maybe, maybe I get Sadie, Sadie playing football one day. We'll see. But um, 
that's special. And, you know, my son too has become like, you know, that that's, that's his love. Like I've, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell a funny story about Andrew. And so I, I was in this road race a couple of weeks ago in Waltham and they gave us all these bags and they were like a Navy blue bag. It had yellow writing on it. And I had in the backseat of the car and I go get, get Andrew out of the seat and looks down at the bag goes, dad, is that a Malden bag? I go, oh, no, 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 Andrew, that's, that's just a bag, goes, looks at me, goes, we don't like Malden in our house. And I'm like, I've achieved it as a father. I've made it, I, 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 I've, done, I've, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, I, you know, Andrew, Be all I, end all. I, I'm like, I've, I've won, I've made it as a father. Wow. And um, he, he, he loves it, he loves they love they love the two of them going to the Thursday night, the Wednesday night dinners and hanging out with the team. Andrew like after we won the Thanksgiving Day game, Andrew was in the locker room with them taking pictures with the trophy. I got to have Andrew on the sideline, you know, when we won the game and that that and I got I remember like having being up during the COVID year. Uh, when only parents are allowed at the game, being like, oh, yeah, my sin's number 27. <laughs> being at Malden with Sadie in her first year and you know, the year that Malden forgot to bring the trophy to the game. Yeah. Um, oh, but Taking shots yeah. left and right. Here we listen, go. listen, I... These kids... I love I love these kids now at that, but I, it's, I, I, I find it strange that they have friends who play at Malden because... We're at the game and like they're talking like, oh, that's such like how do you oh that's my buddy uh, like I done never had a friend who went to Malden. You didn't do that because, back in two thousand four. No, no, like I blasphemous. I won't wear gold, like I won't wear. I I don't buy Notre Dame stuff because I'm not wearing blue and gold. Like that's wow. I hate their blue. I hate their stupid gold helmets. I say it every year. They're stupid <laughs> gold helmets. I hate them. You know, I, when did you first, when did you first, like, when you can think back to your first moment of like, I hate Malden. Where is that moment? Do you, do you recall a moment in which you were just uh, like, I'm going to hate this city next to me that actually has a lot of nice people and so on, but I'm going to, I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of, of my great, life. <laughs> I have a lot of friends from Malden. They, but they just all happen to have gone to Malden Catholic and Mystic and uh, Northeast Regional. None of them have gone to Malden High. Um, and we do talk a lot of trash around that. Like, like you guys have been in our group chat and heard the things I've said around Thanksgiving time. And <laughs> we'll keep it PG, but uh, <laughs> we'll keep it it don't flooded. try to don't try to expose my phone yeah. in my group chat. <laughs> exactly. Don't pull and, uh, down, okay? You know what it is? It's like my my dad. My dad every year would take us to that game, and um, my dad, you know, my dad didn't play football at Medford High, but yeah, you know, my dad, my I'm a third generation Medford resident. My grandfather worked for the city. My father and his brothers all went to Medford High, and you know, I think being, you know, I think I think I was like eight years old the first year we went to. Uh, we went one Saturday to a Medford High game, and. So you're talking back in like 94 when Bud Kelly was coach and there, there were probably like 2000 people there on a Saturday afternoon. Like, and I just go, wow, this is good. And then they took me to Thanksgiving and, and you just see like, you know, you just being a little kid and you're just like, oh, I want that to be me. You know, I want I mean, that atmosphere and, is just really and general. I was so lucky. I think this went into the part of like the, the the second part of the question you had, like what what made me the way I am. Yeah, I was so lucky to be in high school when I was, because I had so many people there, like Bud Kelly, Rod Zempel, Paul Matatal, um, John McAdam, um, Joe Barletta, all these older guys. <laughs> who were, like I said, that, that, you know, Joe Grandy, you know, and then I got to meet people like Ed Finn, Reggie Graham, Joe Barletta, like all these people, like I, I would go to these like award banquets and 
you know, when everybody's talking to themselves, I'm up in the back talking to these older guys, these older teachers, these older coaches, and just taking all that wisdom in. And I, I, I got, I, you know, he, I, loving to hearing the stories about Steve Miller, hearing the stories about Eddie Rideau, hearing the stories about Ray Romano, hearing the stories about Kevin Conniff, the 67 team, the 70, 78 team. And I just soaked that in to the point where, like, my friends are like, you know, a little, I like this stuff a little bit. <laughs> but that, that, that was, like, that's what got, like, I was never an, an amazing student. I, you know, I have no problem saying this. I had, I had really bad learning disabilities where school was tough for me. But that camaraderie with being on the football team you know, going in and having a, a submaster like Steve Maskell and then having like guys like Dave Polcari around who was my uncle's baseball coach and having those guys who just, you know, lived it, lived that, you know, um, you know, Bud Kelly said not every guy, you know, just because you throw a blue and white t-shirt on doesn't make you a Mustang. You have to live. And I can remember like, it was like my first, I got lucky, like, I got to dress for varsity as a freshman, and not a lot of kids did it. I think it was like me, the first game was me, Chris Richard, Mike Phillips, um, and Julian Mandela, obviously, who was a varsity player as a freshman. We got to be on the varsity roster that day, and I remember, like, I was screwing around the hallway with this, with a, with a kid, and, like, we were, like, fake fighting, and my, um, the homeroom teacher, Mr. Gadam, who is still our ticket taker for the game, comes out and points at me and goes, "In my after school, in in my classroom, if you're you're a minute late, you'll regret it." So what about the other kid? <laughs> he, he's the one that started it. Like, what about the other kid? And then, sure as crap, at two nineteen, I'm at the desk, um, in my jersey, and he unloaded on me about how. When you put that jersey on, when you put on that blue and white jersey, you represent every guy that came before you. You, you represent the Mustang way. And how dare you embarrass it and shit like that? And I'm like, that's like when I got the whole like introduction. I'm like, wow, this is how the jersey. Like I I don't understand this. Like I think it, it goes back to like that Bud Kelly. Like, just because you threw throw the jersey on doesn't mean you're Mustang. That's when I got to kind of be like, this This is something I want to be a part of. I want to be, I want to feel the way that these guys do. And, you know, a lot of guys do it through coaching or teaching. You know, I was obviously never going to become a teacher. Coaching, I'm not really good at, at you know, you can either coach, you can't. Like you know that like there are guys out there who wanna who wanna be coaches, but well, I some, think there's a lot to... of people that have knowledge of a game, right? Like yeah. anybody has knowledge of a game, but, but then, can like, you present you that? that? Can you like pass that? that knowledge on? I I I I'm not good at that. I knew from a early I'm not good at I, I have a hard time, you know, explaining to my daughter how to, how to like do her uh or a language arts well, I think coaching sometimes. football is so difficult because of all the yeah. sports and Every sport is difficult in its own right, but coaching it is like, especially from the defensive side of the ball, like everything is all about areas and gap responsibility and so on. So if someone misses an assignment, like you could, tr you truly could let up a home run play that cost you a game. I mean, I've seen yeah. it. like in other sports, I don't know how that works. Like basketball, I don't think if you mess up a defensive assignment a few times, it kills you in a game or maybe in hockey it does because yeah. it's a low scoring game, but you know, I, football is just different in that sense. So I understand what you're trying to I do. I say this in all, I say this in all honesty though, a team can find a coach all the time. There's going to be coaches out there. Mm -hmm. You're part of a dying breed. Okay. Yeah. There because of, like you said, all those people you listed, they're getting older. Murph. They're, they're, a lot of know, them are gone. A lot of them are a lot gone. Of them are... A lot of them are and, getting and... older and you're, you're the next person up because you got to look at it in our graduating yeah. class alone. And everyone after that, there's no one that has as much passion over Medford as you do alone. Back I, then, said, I, 
you're, you're, uh, dude, you're your, keeping a pulse. Yeah. You're keeping a pulse on that kind of person, and you should be a hundred percent proud of the person yeah. that you are, and that you're keeping that tradition alive and well, and doing everything you can to fight for it. Because without you, who knows what that program is as far as its traditional and its values. John yeah. Curley's a great coach. You represent the tradition of Med- Medford I. Yeah. That's you. That's that you're the you're the heart, dude. And I I I like I, I know like George Carpelli said I, I think when uh last year I forget who it was who passed away. I think I might have been after Bud Kelly passed away. You know, it's like we're losing all this institutional knowledge and who's gonna be the next one to stand up. And I always said, like, I gladly take that challenge on because I I owe it to those guys who were like, like my mentors who, you know, and, and I said a lot of my, you know, Joe Grandy, Steve Masco, Bud Kelly, Al McDougal, uh, the list goes on, you know, a lot of these, uh, Ernie Adelino, a lot of these guys, you know, I owe it to them to, to keep this going. Like, and I, and I, I, I can be very vocal about it. Like, I get very upset when I see teams put baby blue in their uniforms. I get very upset when I see oh, silver we, in their oh, uniforms. And the I logos. mean, I, oh, you, know, know. you brought it up. Um, you brought it up. I know that I'm you're a Pirates Memphis guy. But here's where I'm going to argue against you here a little bit. I mean, I besides four years of high school, okay, I was a public school method person myself, so I have a right to this argument here. I think adding in the baby blue... Like nowadays in sports, dude, it's all about logos and it's all about swag, right? Especially at the collegiate level and even oh. somewhere at the high school level, what you get, you know that been, better than anybody. Been very big on the, on the, on but the for logo, high yeah. school kids, there's something different about buying something that has strictly just navy blue in it versus having some baby blue mix and white and something that's just a little bit of a third alternate type. I wish you would just like. Just sip the Kool Aid, man. Just a little nope. bit. Uh, how nope. cool would it yeah, be? It was, no, no, hold on. Hold on. I, I, I get. Kevin I get, Salito would most certainly do this if you. I'm sure he would. I know he would. With baby blue in it, dude. I, I know he would. I know. I'll be would. honest with you. I would go to silver before I went to baby blue. Oof. You are missing. You're a out Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, all right, but here's, here's the thing too. Let, let me ask you something, and you might know this. I don't know this personally. The Mustang logo, as we know it, when we were in high school, the, the hand-drawn Mustang logo. The M yeah. with the uh, the M with they the A and smoke. Believe it or not, you know that it's, it's, not, smoke? it's not smoke. It's hay. I found that okay, out. So, so that makes it even worse. Believe it or not, it's hay. Yeah, it makes it even worse. So <laughs> I thought we saw it was not. I don't have listen. I don't have anything against the person who originally drew that. I think but his name of, was Paul Grubb. Listen, John Paul, actually met listening? him recently. Paul, if you're listening, I'm sorry, bud. But that logo is beyond outdated. Every other team has adapted into a new souped up logo. And again, if that logo was a classic logo and everyone recognized it great. But the oh, fact yeah. that you didn't know that that was hey until today kind of tells me <laughs> that that logo doesn't really speak a lot. And I've seen it change over times and I've seen different variations of the Mustang itself. But you look at something like that where it's it's time for a change in the fact that like you got to keep the values, you keep the tradition, yeah. you keep the history, but all this is doing is Anthony's talked to so many student athletes that literally tell you, if you feel good and you look good, you play good. And it, it, I'm telling you, that's what it is. Yeah. And you know what? It's I'm so not saying true, that you need, though. you don't need to be all fancy and stuff, but I'm telling you in this day and age, you want to catch with the times you're telling us now how, you're you're getting on with Facebook and Instagram and mm-hmm. all this stuff, and we're catching up with the times. The kids now, I don't care who. I I got a 15 year old. I know for a fact it's all about the quote unquote drip, the swag, whatever they've yeah. got on. They they're wearing the I, vipers. I, 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 they're wearing I, the the tinted visors, the the yeah. gloves, every the the cool looking cleats, the shoes, all this crap. If whatever is gonna make my kid excel in sports, I don't care what it is. I went out and bought a pair of Vipers because she thought she was going to look good in them. You know, it's just like, be, change the colors. That's what I'm saying. Change the so when, when, well, when we were, uh, when I mean, Sean I, came in, I, I was a purist in the sense that, that that M, I always thought was, you know, that's our logo. And then John did something 
we got the helmets in and he goes, what do you think? And he switched our helmet logo to the running Mustang. And he goes, you know, this was like the, the glory logo, you know, back when people feared Mustang football. And, and, and I got I to say, I'm like, He's right. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. It was clean. And then we got, you know, we got ended up getting our own logo with the with the running horse with Mustang football on it, and you know, uh, we we do we do a lot of swag, we do a lot of swag, but you know, John, that that running horse has has grown on me a lot, but I, I'm not ready yet. But, Maybe. but I'll throw one more thing at you. I'm just thinking dollar signs here for you. You talked about earlier that like Thanksgiving Day and opening day are arguably your two biggest crowds. Yeah. So why not have merchandise that is just different? That for those games you only get it that game. Dude, that look at the Pats. Look at the game. Pats. Look at the Patriots. Yeah, I know that's your team. Patriots, Bruins, Red Sox, Celtics. They've all created that third jersey. That. Yeah. Went to classic Jersey that, you know, the, the Red Sox are wearing yellow and blue yeah. on Marathon Monday. That's not the Red Sox colors. Mm -hmm. I think if you did something like that, you'd sell lights out. And it's just, it's a special looking thing. Because I'm telling you. The, Murph, the, if you were the, wearing a baby blue that right now, I would wear a baby blue this with this. I would wear what you have on baby blue. Even you don't even have to go that mix. far. Just the baby blue like piping. Mix, yeah. I would in a second. I would in a we'll second. See. Baby blue is one of the, I think, for, for both for both male and female. Baby and you know, blue is an and you know who to go popular. to. And you know who to go to to create that for you. Yeah. I do. I do. I do know who. They... But I get it. I, mean, I get it. There's maybe, maybe, of, of maybe. I'm not ready yet. Maybe I'll grow into it. Are you gonna Maybe do throwbacks? So. Are you gonna do the mud cats again? You, dude. We will help I, I, you. I, I, a, I, I would love one you night be the mud cats. I would love for one year, one game a year. Vintage mud cats. To, to throw on those mud cats, the mystic jerseys with the fish on the side of the helmet. <laughs> dude, there you so, go. That's a, it's a so pe million pe dollar for idea. people for people watching who don't understand how crazy I am. So people don't understand the original name of the team. We originally they were meant the Mystics, and then we became the Mudcats of the Mystics. And for those of you that don't know what a Mudcat is, it's basically a swamp fish. It's a it's a it's a form of catfish. It's a very ugly fish. And in the '30s, um, those the Boston Globe had a writer, uh, cartoonist Gene Mack, and the Mercury editor for the Mercury Sports page, just said, we're going to stop calling the team the Mudcats and just stop calling them the Mustangs. Because back then, I like, mean, the thank SMU Mustangs, <laughs> thank God, is because back then in the 30s, the SMU Mustangs, they weren't like the Alabama, but they were like the LSU, I guess, of the time, like that, that top 10 team, but not number one, but not number two, but Maybe like that three four team. Sounds like Bobby Boucher played for that team. Seriously. So <laughs> they they got together and just said, "We're going to start calling them Mustangs." Hey, that's and a high quality eighth two zero. In in 1938, <laughs> it caught on, and then the school committee voted, and then Thanksgiving Day 1938, they you know uh, actually they marched from Method City Hall. To McDonald to McDonald Field with the horse, with horses, right? yeah, and they had cowboy hats on. I've only heard the story from Murph four hundred times, oh. and it, it was it was like, Sounds and familiar. that's how that's how because that's how we became the Mustangs. You know what I just and thought? Thank of? God, like you, you said, know what I just thought of? And I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but you know what I just thought of? And it's the can't do it now because they've poured too much money into it. But they should have played the last game at Gillis Park. They should have played a football game before they tore that all up. That would have been big awesome. Enough, but... oh, well, it was yeah. at one point. They took the that fences actually, down. It, it, it would have been actually, you know, it yeah, been did cool, you know that's where the football I games wish we played? thought it. That's where Memphis and I played their football games at Gillis Park. Hey, it's not a bad idea. They well, ripped... That would have been a, that would have been they a can't cool do it idea. Now. We've done like funny. a flag game or something like that. So, something. so you know, I had a practice. 
I, I'll I'll end with with the, I'll end with one of my last questions with this, and 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 I'll have you think about it for a minute. And I don't I don't want a I don't want you dropping seventeen names here and explaining why there should be seventeen different people to answer this question. I want one name, Murph. One name. Okay, you can give me one honorable mention if you want. You've been around this Method Mustang program for an extremely long time. You've heard the legend of people who have come through this program. You've seen people play with your own very eyes. You've played with people who have been very good that are in the Hall of Fame. Who would you say, based off of your knowledge of this program, based off of what you've heard, what you've seen, or whatever, is the greatest football player that come through the Method Mustang program since you've been alive, since you've heard, since you know, known this person? Since I've been alive. However you want to answer it, alive, that you've heard urban legends, whatever it is that you want, tell me. That's a clock ticking, just so you know. That's a what? That was a clock ticking sound effect. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you four names. I'm not going to explain them. I'm just going to – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put – I'm going to put that in four categories. So urban legend – Crazy likes Canava, Eddie Rido. For urban, for like stories. I was going like to say people, Eddie Rido because I search people that like has stories said that I've heard, a like I've heard, I've heard, I've heard Mark Romano just say like Eddie Rido was just special. But like I've also heard like I, when I used to work at the LMH, I used to work with a lot of the you know I used to have a lot of the old guys who would come around and just said that. Al Crazy Likes, and I work with his grandson at the station now, so I'm not, I'm not saying it's because I work with his grandson, but the stories that I heard those old guys say, and that, that's a guy he played at, you know, was supposed to go to Notre Dame, went off to World War II, then ended up playing at BC, played for the Green Bay Packers, like, those, those, that, the stories that those old guys used to say about him were just crazy, and then like, like I said, the, the Eddie Rideout stories, crazy. You know, people I played with, Julian Mundell. Julian was special. I mean, Julian was wow. I mean, that's my I mean, my brother's age. I've heard that name. I've definitely Julian was special. And well, he gave me a lot there. I, Eddie Rido, it's a name that I've heard obviously way before yeah. my time, but I coached, I think, his nephew. Well, maybe his mm -hmm. grandson, but one of maybe one of my favorite kids ever coached. You know, but kid Kids have been around. That's a hard, hard question to answer. Like it is a hard question because I, I mean I'm sure I've had I've had so many good names off. You know, and there's a lot of guys like, and you know this like if you had one more year with them, like what would, like right now like this senior class like, because they were freshmen during that COVID year. So they really have a freshman year to like develop. And then like, I look at like what we were able to do with like, if I had, if we had Jack Lombardo one more year, if we had Luis Barbosa one more year, Stevens Exeter one more year. Yeah, I mean, those year. kids are great players though, but you're naming names you that are like all time. I mean, yeah. But you know, putting and, them up against hundreds of And, the, and then there's, there's, there's some other guys like, you know, if I, if we had, you know, if, if we had Alvin Legros for a full year instead of that COVID year, if I had Jared, we had Jared all stop and had a full year instead of that COVID year, like how would those guys, like how would those guys, you know, Reggie, uh, what Derbe was the Gould, name of that kid in the mid 2010s? He was a Reg, running back. I, what? We had a kid, Reggie, uh, third. Thurber, I think is pronounced. He played at Springfield College. He was a uh, Giovanni Sanders. Giovanni, Giovanni Sanders. Giovanni. That kid was. I have never very, seen him come through method like that. Giovanni, uh, Gio, Giovanni was very. Reggie Thelamuk was his name. He was an unbelievable quarterback who he went to play at Springfield College. All right, he we can go on forever. We're stopping. We're stopping. We're but, not. But we're not. Giovanni. Stop, stop, Giovanni was. Stop. Giovanni. Stop. 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 Yeah. Okay. But I will say. Like, I, I will said say one this. person, and we let this go not, way too I'm far. Going off, I'm, I'm going off. I'm going off. 
As soon as we start bringing up Springfield College, we're done. We all have to stop because unless we're talking about John Cena, I don't want to hear anything about Springfield (laughs) College, okay? But (laughs) I will say that regardless of the talent that these kids have, these kids are a pleasure to be around. I mean, they they drive me crazy at times because, and I think you know teaching, like kids are a little different than they were. Kids, you want to talk about dealing with, the evol- evolution of the of football, the kids change. Um, kids definitely have changed a lot. Um, in some ways for the better, in some ways, you know, you, there are things that I would have liked. But one thing I will say is like that I'm pretty proud of, of this group that we have graduating is I think we've, 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 we've turned them into Mustangs and we've turned them into good citizens, good students, good athletes. And they're leaving a program. They're leaving with a winning program. Um, well, we, listen, I, I'll, I'm going to one up this and, and help you out on this. Let's be real too. You naming all the stuff that these coaches do in the community that your coach does alone. Right. And we're not even naming the other coaches yeah. and you look in this city and like, I, I could say it a little bit, I guess here, but coaches haven't gotten a raise in forever. And the fact that like coaches in these programs are expected to do so much in the city and be involved with your teams and expect to be a part of these extracurriculars and do all this. You're mentioning all these things that John does. It has nothing to do with coaching the game that he gets judged the most for doing. Right. So yeah. he gets judged for that. He gets judged for his record. He gets charged, judged for anybody that has a problem with playing time mm-hmm. or anything else is immediately his fault. But then on top of that, if he's not doing well there, he's going to get slammed for it. And then if his team's not involved in the community, he's going to get slammed for that too. And that's true of any single coach that comes through. So I- I'm not trying to go in a soapbox by any means or make a stance here. I'm just saying, like, you're mentioning all this stuff. And mind you, these coaches have been doing it. And a lot of them are educators. A lot oh. of them are people that are in the city that yeah. – you get the best of both worlds. You get a really good person in the classroom who educates and involved in these kids' lives. And then on top of it, some of those kids are involved with even further if they happen to coach a sport they're involved with. And it's a great role model to have with them. So, like, when you – I see John. He's extremely involved in the community. He works at the rink. He has all his players work for him. Anywhere he shows up, his kids are there. There's an, and it's an army deep, and you're there too. Yeah. Right? That's what like I wish sometimes people just would like understand. I, I want to say so he makes elements to it. I, I think we had this conversation with him recently that he makes six hundred six thousand dollars a year. It might be sixty two, but somewhere between six thousand six hundred dollars. In nineteen forty five, the football coach at the high school made forty five hundred dollars. So that gives you an idea that wait, wait, wait. in seventy in years he's gone up forty five. They made $4,500. What's the coach making now? I mean, I don't know if I... Six thousand, About 6000 Shut up, dude. You're telling me in almost an 80-year window that yeah. they had $2,000. <laughs> so you're telling me they make like $20? I mean, what? Yeah. What? Yeah, it's oh, kind of... That's not, I'll find wait, it. Are I, you are you I, doing some converting? Forty five hundred dollars in nineteen forty five at Mefford High School. I, I want to say it was probably a full time position back in the day because like so that's like, yeah that's seventy seven thousand dollars today. Yeah, that's about seventy eight grand a year yeah. today. But like I, mean, I, I was, a, I'll I'll say this because they must have loved their football in the forties, dude. Oh, we were we were powerhouse, but I think you 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 like. Do you have that? Look, Do you have that as proof? Uh, you could walk into a committee meeting with that and be like, "What's yeah, happening? Want to talk, talk about raises? Everybody else is getting raises. Oh, Everybody yeah. else is getting raises." Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I will. I, I will say That's like it. we're talking people, about this now. People, not, people don't understand like part two coming out next week. He's please. a. Tw- he's a. Tw- that's a twelve month job being the full because. He, he and he deals with you, and he gets no extra money for that. He deals, he deals with me. He deals with the kids. He works on getting, you know, right. You know, they're at they're they're. He's at the weight room three four days a week. You know, get getting helping kids get their grades done, helping kids find jobs, helping kids get into college, helping kids, you know, work on their diets and 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 work on programs, get them in the seven on sevens. I mean, you break that down. He's making, you know. A dollar, a eight. dollar Less and eight dollar cents an hour. an hour, probably. Basically, if he's lucky. <laughs> and I, if he's lucky. And, and I that's not counting all the stuff I, you I that you that. know. 
going at home, going home and, and doing, you know, work at home and writing up schemes and working on offense. And, and, and it's, it's, it's not for everybody. And, you know, it, they are, you know, they do deal with a lot of, a lot of, and you're dealing you know, parents, parents are very vocal now. Yep. Parents and are very vocal dealing, now. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, you're dealing with so much, dude. There is just I, I, I grew up, there. and you I relieve grew, him of so much stress. And yes. st- imagine <laughs> I try them, him having to deal with this. Like it's, it's yeah, like, I, I do try to, to to talk to the parents and say like, you know, if you have a problem, come to me. And look at the booster president being a <laughs> shield a for good his job. coach. I try because because like I said, like it it is it is a very stressful job. Like you're staying on kids for grades. You're staying on kids. And, and he's, and I don't know how he does it because I, I would never be able to do it because in, and, and he does, a, 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 he does a great job. At it. Like I said, like we've had, we, we were six win team this year. We had the best defense we've had in like, we don't, our defense averaged only, I think it was like 13 points a game. We let up. Um, we, you know, had the most wins we've had in a long time. We had the mo- largest win against Malden in a long time. Best defense yeah, I mean, in a long time. Defensively, we that never, was the fastest. We never went game. under 500 this year. Yeah. That's the first time that's happened since 1993. That we yes. have never dropped below 500. That's scary. And um, I, by, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that you accomplished. And obviously... There's a lot that and now small, carries over. And I over. think he has a very small coaching staff compared to a lot of a lot of cities. I mean, and right. yeah, I mean, you go to Everett and you go to some of these schools, and there's like 12 coaches on the sidelines. I think we have like compared to you know a lot of those cities. We, I, you know, we don't have the largest, co- but they get the job done, they do. and they're a pleasure to deal with, and they're great to my family. Um, the kids are great to my kids. Like. Like I said, my, you know, they, they welcomed Andrew as like a little brother. And, you know, my, I thank God for my wife for let's, who lets me, that, like, that's the other thing. It's like, thank God for my wife, like, who lets me do this stuff. It only took me <laughs> an hour and 30 minutes to. You want to save the best for last. You want to save the best. You owe me 50 last. bucks. No, <laughs> you want to save the best for last. Like, she, and thank God, like, she, she stepped up on Thanksgiving Day and was able to help. And, um, you know, and, and like I, I will say, like this, this team is a little spe- this year was a little special. I do keep them in my dining room. Um, you know, shout out, team. shout out to these kids who just, uh, you know, and like I said, like I, you know, I hope, like I know that, like when I was in high school, every team I feel like had a mother's club or had a boosters club, and I know that they still do exist. Um, and I, like, I have had some, some teams reach out to me and like, how do I do this? How, you know, how would you get started with this? What do you do? And, and that, that's like the, like one of the ultimate, like, um, compliment I think I can be paid is when people like have reached out to me for advice, like, wow, I, I guess I must be doing something right <laughs> now. <laughs> but it, it's like, you know, I, I, I've become, I've gotten a, make amazing friends out of this. There's kids, you know, I get, I get to see these kids grow and I get to see that, you know, them, you know, some of them having families now and some of them being successful now and like their, their, their well, careers. I, and I mean, dude, I'm hearing you say this as like a booster president and I'm just like, it's amazing. But I, and that's, and that's like the weird thing. It's like, and, and thank, thank God, like, you know, for John and thank God for, um, for Jay, who, who kind of let me be involved more than I would say, like most boosted presidents are. Like, I don't think I'm like, you know, like, the, like, what was it, the guy's name in Friday Night Lights who drove like the black, uh, the black uh, Corvette, who was like the booster president. He had the black Corvette. Uh, like, buddy, go, buddy Garrity. Go, buddy Garrity. Go, go Perlman on the back bumper stick. Like, I don't think I. You know I, how I many times I, I've called you Buddy Garrity to people? I'm like, he's the Buddy <laughs> Garrity of the Mepper Mustang football team. <laughs> like, I don't think I have that kind of club, but I, I you know, I, 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 I will say, like, I, I, I can't thank him enough for, like, letting me be a part of this. And, like, and, and like I said, like, you know, we've had some. 
years where you know the record wasn't what we wanted it to be, but he did there. exact he did exactly what he told me to do. He goes, "We're gonna come in. We're gonna change the culture. We're gonna make these kids believe in themselves, and we're gonna and we're gonna win some games." And you know, and look what you guys look what you guys look where we are now. And, and him him and those kids and those assistant coaches deserve all the credit. I I. I'm just in the back trying to support them how I can. And I, I, I also, I, I can't say thank you enough to all like the, the sponsors we have in the community. Go to our website, metrofootball.net, click on the sponsors page, look at our sponsors, support them. Again, all those people that, you know, either bought a raffle ticket this year, bought a t-shirt, bought a piece of pizza, bought a hot dog, bought a, you know, sponsor the senior all that money goes to this team, you know, it, it, it goes back, you know, we're able to feed them, we're able to to clothe them, we're able to, you know, get make their experience great. And, you know, and... Listen, it comes it, full well, circle. Yeah. If, if you got a kid that's, you know, too far off, you think, right now, they're going to be in high school someday. They're going to need the help and the support. So it's going to come full circle. Karma is everything. So... Give back to this team now. Start start yeah. now because you know what you're gonna need help someday too. And again, like you said, when Medford gets the call for help, I'm always yeah. very surprised at how well they all turn out and how everything and, happens. And like I, I that's it, like and if you, you know, need a videographer, let us know. We know some good people too. <laughs> We're um <laughs> and like I said, like winning now, like the the the, the buzz, like the like we we post um we're able to do some like really cool like Jess Walsh, who's like the uh, social media person for the police department on her. She's kind of helped me out with our social media and helped me make some graphics and like the buzzing, like being able to put everywhere, Mustang win, Mustang win, and just seeing like the shares and how excited people are and people wanting to get back into it. And people, you know, wanting to, wanting to wear those Mustang football t-shirts around the city, wanting to donate and help out is like, like wow, it's starting to we're really we're, we're starting to build it back. Um, you know, it, it, it was it was Big it was never football great again. <laughs> and, and, and like you said, like the Mustang way of life has always been there, but I'm happy to see that we're getting people excited, and yeah. well, it, it, you know, it means the world to me. And I just want everybody out there to know, like, how much I appreciate them. And if, and like I said, if you got a you got an eighth grader who's coming to high school, if you got a year freshman sophomore junior in high school like come off of football like there's like i would tell you there is nothing like being under those lights like some of the some of the best friends i could ever have like like i i i can truly say this like um there isn't a kid that i played with that like when i see him out in the street that i kind of go like oh, i kind of want to ignore that kid no i i we we both to each other we hug How's your family? How's this? And like, you never, you never, I never ignore those people. I still see them today and we talk like, like it's 20 years ago. Like we never miss a step. And, you know, we still, you know, some of my coaches, I still see them like, you know, sadly, like one of our assistant coaches just passed away who we, I had as a uh, assistant coach when I was there. And I was so happy when John brought him on and I was so happy that he was able to be there this year and have this exciting year. and you know, be there on Thanksgiving and hold that trophy. And, you know, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm sad to see him go, but I'm happy to know that his last year on earth was a happy one. And I guess I think you guys know better than anybody how happy I was on Thanksgiving morning. Cause we might have proof. We might have proof. Of how <laughs> I, 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 know. I, 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 it, it was, it was, it was an emotional day for me. And Listen. like, like, can that video be released for the episode to promote the episode? Not yet, but oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll get him, Anthony. I'll get him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. All time reels. I, and I appreciate Super that Bowl. in the sense that that's something that 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 that's something that I I got to watch and say like, oh, this you really does. Daily. You watch this. It daily. No, but like the, people deserve to see. It's it. something like I sat there and with my wife and said, you know what, this is what. <laughs> You know, and people still ask me, yeah, this stuff means a little bit. You let this stuff get to you. And I'm like, 
I don't know how to explain it because it's it, it, it does. That how video, does you wouldn't even have to explain it. You could just open your phone and show them that 11 second video. <laughs> And yeah. that's all and, you would have to do. And that listen, and, and that's um, the happy days and those are the glory days. I've been on the receiving end of when they lose. I got screamed at by because 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 one thing one thing is like we hadn't won at home since I was a sophomore. Wow, you what? They we had we had won at home since I was so it 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 had been twenty two years since we won at home. So oh, sure. we. We we've beaten them two out of the last four, even though they'll tell you that the COVID year doesn't count because it wasn't played on Thanksgiving. But they counted when we played them on Fenway as a win on Thanksgiving. Fenway. But yeah. but I'm not going to go into with Malden uh, things because we're not going there. We're not going. We're there. not going to go there. But I will say, you know, it's a rivalry again. You know, it was a little one sided for a while, but it's a rivalry again. It's been very competitive these last. Four years, um, yeah, yeah, and it, it's getting that. to be it's 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 fun again. And t- this last year was pretty fun, and but it next was, year, and, and and to see your reaction, and obviously with passionate dude, I think for for me, I think, and I said this to you, it was like the first time that I finally got it, and I think I understood what it all really meant to you, and I think that's why it was important yeah. to have you on here today as a booster president. Uh, you know, somebody who is invested in these kids and invested in these programs yeah. and obviously helping them with the opportunities and provide the best opportunities for them, yeah. whether that's equipment or whether that's food or whether that's end of the year gifts or whatever that is. It's people like you, man, that dedicate yourself. So we appreciate you popping on here today. I appreciate it. I, appre- I appreciate you guys having yeah. me. Thanks for coming uh, on, buddy. And I, I, I will... Uh... You know, one more thing, like about that that rivalry. It's like you know, it's, it's like I, we have John now, who is some of them. They've had like four different rivals on Thanksgiving in the last like twenty years. You at AC, like you've had so many different. And, and you know, for a for a hundred, it'll be one hundred and thirty five years this year. One hundred and thirty seven game, we've had the same rivalry. So like that, that's just like, and to be part of that, whether it's as a player, a coach, a booster a team photographer, like we have, we have so many great people that like, we, you know, Jonathan, who I know does work with you guys, he's become our team photographer. He captures all these great images for us. I, I got to give him a quick shout out too. Like we have so many people that support us in the background um, from Bobby and Rachel to on down that are just to our mother's club. Uh, I, I'm not going to mention them all because I, I don't want to forget a name, but like, Shout out to our moms who who just keep these kids fed, and shout out, shout out to everybody that support us, and and just from the bottom of my heart, thank you for helping me and and helping this program and making my job a little bit easier. <laughs> and if you want to get involved, you. he loves you guys. He loves you. <laughs> and 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 if you got if anybody out there wants to get involved, yeah, come on out. You know, we'll come on down. We'll we we are always looking for. People to help with meals, people to help with the concession, people to help this is, with. This uh, is the wrap it up. Music. This is not going to stop. Like, you. This, this is, is literally wrap it up. Music. Not going to stop like, talking. Like, like he's just not going. I, I, you know, one thing I can do is I can talk. I can like, talk. It's just and not going to stop. We love you. You <laughs> yeah. know that. He's like, oh, one more thing about the Metro Ball the rivalry back yeah. in 1888 when this game for you know like. 1889. 1889. Check your calendar. I feel like the game's tomorrow now. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, we'll see that. We'll, I can't wait. Might have to break this episode into 10 pots. <laughs> um, it's going to take me you two guys, hours but, uploaded. And, but also, thank you guys for all that you've, you've kind of helped us out with. And Listen, hopefully, I, we, get that, hopefully we get that Thanksgiving video out soon. And, Probably and, not happening. <laughs> I'm going to say this now. I'm saying this on the air. I'm saying it in front of all of you. I will dedicate my services of taking the seniors' photos this year before the year. If you want a photo shoot with the seniors, I will do it. Get it prepped. Get me the date. Tell We're me where it is, and I will do that for you. I like last year, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna plug you right now. Like people out there, like if you got a kid who's a superior athlete, you want to send to school, you want to get or you want to get a video made, reach out to these guys. 
And also, if you, you're a team and you want to get some pretty, you know, fancy photos done with some cool graphics, reach out to these guys. Like, we, we were hoping to do it last year, but something happened with our – we didn't even have taken our team photo, I think, till like, week five last year. You didn't year. get your jerseys so, on time. Yeah. So, <laughs> we didn't. Um, but we're going to do that this year. I can't wait. Happen. But like I said, if you if you reach out to these guys, like the the stuff that like you know Anthony's the the mouthpiece that Anthony is and the, and the ideas he has, but like the create your creative, um, the stuff you've been able to come up with, like like I I've sent you like an idea, and like twenty five minutes later I have something that like like people pay like big money for like this this stuff like this this is stuff that I thought took like weeks to like, like like put together and you you put it together on your phone and like while, you know, get, while he's holding like a baby yeah you'll get <laughs> yeah. you'll get your invoice next week Murph yeah and then and, but like like I said like it, the way you're able to like doctor their photo like uh, wow like I'm Incredible. telling you people uh, if you're out there and you need you need that kind of service these this, this is your these are your people like Thanks, buddy. Thank I'm you. happy that we were finally able to sit down and do this yep hopefully um, a couple months, maybe maybe mid November, we, we you know we get together and we can do like a Booster versus uh, Booster. Method Malden rivalry episode, and I can get somebody from Malden on here and we can talk about like you know that'd be kind of cool, like a cool little build up maybe we can do. And I mean Malden and, would uh, definitely do it. They appreciate that for yeah, sure. Yeah, they appreciate <laughs> a lot. Yeah, they appreciate a lot. There's no gold helmets though. That's that's the. Oh, okay. But all but, right, well, listen, we love you, buddy. We appreciate you coming I love on you here guys. today. As always, we are always welcome back on here with your wealth of knowledge, man. Yeah, when we get back and closer to the football season, let's do that. Let's figure something yep. out. Let's get the button buster back at Colleen's. Uh, yeah. again. And, uh, I, I, you know, the weird, the weird thing about that, though, is I was like, these kids are so energized from, like, winning this year. Like, they're they're all, like, Hell like yeah, big dude. Nate, who was our uh, our big like the million line. dollar belt for this thing, or he's something. like lean, he's like leaning out now, and like they they they're hitting the weight. You know, we got like twenty five guys in that weight room every day, just going crazy. And I I hope that they'll like still eat sugar by the summer, and we can do that. But like, <laughs> <laughs> they're all like taking care of themselves now, and like getting ready for the season. So we'll just the have them chug season. protein shakes and see who can uh, chug the most. <laughs> get that get that uh that protein that uh. What's that protein? So like, we'll get like that premier ice cream. We'll see if can drink the most like protein ice cream. Like, that would that's a cool. But like, I I do love like the stuff we do, and hopefully, uh, you guys I'll have you guys at the concession stand this year. And, uh, well, listen, we you listen, we're always around, brother. We're and you saw at the Guns and Noses away. game. I had pizza left over the other night. Like, I had Harry McGilvery breaking my chops. It's like, wow, finally you got pizza. You're not used to the hockey rink, though. That's why you weren't used to. Yeah, I mean the hockey rink's a little different than the football. We gotta get you there. A lot of hot chocolate. Listen, listen, we're signing out. I love you all. (laughs) Peace. Till next time, guys. We got a really good lineup coming next week. We'll be dropping on social media this week. Some of the guests. Till next time. All right. Thanks, guys.